Well, good morning, Piney Grove folks. Um, coming to you midweek and sharing with you a little bit. I got a, a little word to share, but before we get into that, just give you an update. Um, the COVID situation in my home is much better. Everybody's back in school. Uh, we're still in the midst of a quarantine, but um, not out of the woods yet, but uh, real soon we should know that the, the rest of us, Isaiah and myself, uh, will be free from this uh, next week. We will be in church Sunday. I'll be back in the pulpit. Looking forward to that. I've been missing being with y'all. Um, Johnny and Ann Foldman have been through it uh, with both of them going to the hospital with COVID. and uh, But they're home now, so be praying for them. Also, um, I really am grateful for our church. The people in our church that's been helping, uh, Johnny and Ann, people, y'all have been great to check on myself, uh, see if we need anything. Uh, any of y'all, at any moment, if I had called and said, we need something, you would have brought it. You would have been here. And I'm very grateful for you. Uh, grateful for that. You don't get that everywhere, believe it or not. Even though we all should be that way and every church should be that way, it's just not. Um, so I love you and I'm looking forward to being back with you. Other people, uh, other prayer requests, they're on the prayer chain. If you're not a part of our prayer chain, I recommend you get in touch with Miss Linda or Miss Sue in our church and get on the prayer chain. And if you have something you need praying for, uh, contact us so that we can be ministering to you in prayer. Our people are good about that. Uh, many have asked, I'm, I'm still having back trouble. I think I'm going to have to go to the doctor. Uh, today's a pretty bad day. I'm in a little pain today, but I don't think it'll stop me from being there Sunday at all. I, I don't, I, I don't want anything to stop me from being there Sunday. Uh, that's just bottom line. So I plan on being there. And when I get there, um, we are going to be talking about the uh, the second part of what I did last time. And I know that's been two, three weeks ago, spiritual warfare. And we'll be picking back up in Ephesians chapter six, talking about that. And last time I touched on a couple of things I want to reiterate, bring back up. Um, when it comes to spiritual warfare, how important prayer is. I don't think I did a good enough job pushing the prayer part. It, you're not, when, when, when the Bible, when Paul listed all those spiritual armor things, uh, he walks through and then at the very end, he's like, you know, prayer. And he hits how important prayer is. And without that aspect, you've lost your battle already. That's why I love the prayer chain. That's why I love prayer meetings. Uh, I love us gathering together on Wednesday nights and we have prayer because prayer is where it's at when it comes to spiritual war. Our, Jesus said, my house will be a house of prayer. So that's what it all needs to be about. John Wesley, I shared last time I preached that he was convinced that prayer of God's people rather than his preaching was why thousands of people were coming to the Lord because he had an army of people praying for him. Um, now, it's a bit of an overstatement because God does what he does. But at the same time, it just showed how important it was to him to understand what a spiritual weapon we have in prayer. Daniel, you know, I shared this. Daniel is praying and praying and waiting for an answer and an angel comes and touches him on the shoulder and says, hey, we heard your prayer. We, we, it's not that we didn't hear it, but the prince of Persia resisted me when I came to you. That's in Daniel 10, 13. And I've had people say to me, that's not in the Bible. 10, 13, look it up. And the prince of Persia is, you know, an enemy of God who is over that area. He's, he's, he is, there, there are a lot more to the spiritual realm than just angels and demons and stuff like that. There's others. These are just the ones we focus on and we miss out that the Bible shows us 
There's divine councils. There's heavenly beings with God in meetings with God. There's all these things going on in your Bible. It's not just demons and angels. They're, they are probably the lower run of the thing. The angel is a job description. The demon is the least of our enemy when it comes to spiritual warfare. We've got others out there like the Prince of Persia who was resisting a messenger of God. And this messenger of God had to go get the archangel, um, Michael, to come so and fight for him so that he could come deliver this message to Daniel. So I love that passage because when it comes to prayer, that reminds me that prayer is more than a grocery list of wants. God is not some cosmic Santa Claus sitting up in the clouds waiting for you to ask for something so that he can come grant your wishes. He's not a genie. There's spiritual warfare. There's a cosmic conflict between good and evil, spiritual forces that are all around us and things are happening and we don't see these things. And the weapons for the battle are found in Ephesians chapter 6, 13 through 17. And then in verse 18, he's added that we should be praying always. I don't care how good you got your armor. If you're not in prayer, you're getting defeated. And that's why us praying for one another, praying, not praying selfishly, but praying to God makes a difference in this spiritual cosmic battle that's going on around us. And our children need our prayers. Our churches need our prayers. Our spiritual leaders need our prayers. Our country needs our prayers. We need to be people of prayer. And as Paul said, that we need to fight the good fight in prayer. Now, the power of the Word of God, you've got to know the Word you got the power of the blood of Jesus. you got to have it applied to your life. you got to have the power of the conquering Savior, understanding that He died for your sins. Because here's the problem. Nobody is temptation-proof. Nobody. I don't care how mature a Christian you are. You have a weakness in your armor somewhere. So you need to understand that you are vulnerable, and many of our brothers and sisters have been attacked by the enemy and that we need to be lifting one another up in prayer. Pride can be a, a really big problem of um, our pride can provide the very opening ended for the sharp thrust of the darts. When you think you got this, when you think you don't need when you think you don't have to, when you think you can do it without God, when you think you can rely on yourself and you're arrogant and prideful, those fiery darts that come at us from the enemy that Paul talked about in Ephesians 6, you have an open place in your armor. You're going to get taken down. And we need each other and lift each other up. If you got a love of money, you got a problem. If you got a quick temper, you got a problem. If you can't control your tongue, who sets the fires of hell? James talks a lot about uncontrolling that critical tongue or that chronic uh, impatience a lot of us have. See, it's not just what we see, what we what we do, put our hands to. It's not it's not those big things that. It's not always the big things we have categorized as good, big sin, little sin, which there's sin. It sometimes it's that stuff like your temper or the fact you won't stop slandering against somebody, a brother or sister. You run your mouth, you run your tongue. Those things are your weaknesses that are being um, opened up and you're hurting the church. You're hurting the work of God and you are going to be under attack and you are going to be defeated. And you're why would you hurt your own brothers and sisters in the midst of the battle that we are in? I'm just praying that we will get beyond that, that we will mature to a point where we will control our tongues, our temper. And we the best way you can do that is prayer.
prayer, prayer, prayer. So don't ever underestimate how wonderful prayer is. Love y'all. I can't wait to be back with y'all on Sunday. And um, pray for the service. Pray for church. Pray for us. We'll be praying for you. Thank you.